G'day and welcome back for more Survival Impossible. Today I've got two very productive things planned. The first is get this drill to the point it can reach the iron deposit. And the second is to design the drop pod so I can start thinking more carefully about the scale of the launching mechanism. Now, from the content of the comments, I'm guessing a few people haven't quite understood what I meant by the launcher system that I want. Basically, I want something passive. So the reason that I dropped the first drop landing pod where I did to see where it landed was I now want to know that to get stuff near the base, I need to launch in basically this direction. So I'm going to fling the drop pods passively using either pistons, or I'm actually thinking of using hinges and pistons. So basically I'll print the thing, and then I'll extend the pistons that the thing's on, and then using the hinge like a pendulum, I'm just going to fling it out forward. And depending on how fast I do that, how long the lever arm is, all that sort of stuff, I'll have, be able to adjust how far I go towards the base and hopefully get to the point where I can drop almost bang right on top of it. Because that would make it a lot easier for recovering the iron that I send down. But that's the dream. Because I'm doing so much practical for today, what I'm actually going to do first is something impractical. And that's going to be using these neon tubes. Capac and I were messing around with building some stuff in a world and he came up with an idea that I hadn't seen before of using these neon tubes as power cables. Basically, because the neon tubes are actually emissive strips, not lights, if you make them completely black, they don't emit any light at all and they look a lot like plastic shiny tubing. So if I place them there like that, then maybe I'll put a corner in and another straight section. And where's that end piece? There's an end piece with a box there. There we go. And an end piece with a box and then I need to fill in this little gap there. So if I place those in, you'll see once they're welded up, they do a pretty good job of standing in for power conduits. Which is kind of nice because I used to play with a mod that had a lot of power conduits in it. And it's one of those things that I kind of miss. It's also potentially a way to replace what I used to do with the pipes from Eichster's decoration pack. So anyone who's watched Survival maybe would have seen that I did this sort of thing with those pipes to add decoration to otherwise bland walls. So if you don't want to spend... well if you don't want to have your shape changed to create detail in the wall you can add things like this to it Energy which I think low. works pretty well so that's kind of my little decorative bit to start off today now it's time for something a little more practical but still with some you know visual design elements to it come on drink your water there we go I am going to implement a script to make it so that this drill system automatically turns off whenever it fills these three cargo containers so to start off with, let's name these three cargo containers, or at least create a group for them. Large cargo containers. They will be all cargo containers. And for when I eventually put an inventory sorting script onto this base, I'm going to do this. Make them all have ores. Cool. Let's hop down here, where I think I'm going to build a little... I suppose it's almost a miniature server room. And I'm going to do this in large grid because Inventory. I just prefer the look. It's so hard in Space Engineers to fill spaces. So by using rotors and placing a small head on them and then building small programmable blocks and timer blocks, I feel like I actually cheat myself out of the opportunity to have lots of buildings, like lots of rooms that are full of stuff. So I actually kind of, in a weird way, like having the bigger blocks. So I want timer block, programmable block, timer, and then a set of stairs in here. And I might just weld these blocks up because they're going to be completely welded. They're not going to be ones I know I can't remove because these are actually the beams that 
go into the asteroid to support the whole station. And then I'm going to do something a little bit different to how I've designed stuff in some in other areas. I don't want to put catwalks on these beams. I want them to be their standard armor. So for the railings, I'm going to use railings rather than catwalks. And I'll leave that open for now. I'll uh, improve my occupational health and safety from Star Wars level to slightly not quite as bad as <laughs> Star Wars level. Uh, but I still want to be able to walk across to each of these containers, so I do want to catwalk for that section. However, what I would normally do is put catwalk on here, so I've got an attachment point to put catwalk there. But I have another idea. I kind of want to show this one off. Uh, that should be a double. Then, this double railing here creates an attachment point to put a straight railing there, which then becomes the attachment point to put a grated catwalk with a wall there. And then another railing straight here, or if I wanted to instead to try and keep that block clear in case I need it for something. I can do this. Get the corner one. Put it there. And I now have all the railings and I have the catwalk only on the block that I wanted on. Which allows me to say put a monitoring LCD down here. Like so. And I think when that's welded up the tiny little bit of pipe that sticks out beyond the catwalk you're barely going to notice. And I feel it kind of it works pretty well. And we've got our little server room and the script that I am going to run. Let's have a look here. Edit. Browse script. This one is from Ufol Beer Seeker, who sent me it in a comment. I haven't seen any others that do this specific treatment. Basically, what it's going to do is detect when those cargo containers are a specific level full. Uh, let's actually make it a bit more than that. And for when it is empty to restart the drills, I'd actually like it to restart. Whoops, need to leave that space in there. I'd like it to restart when they're, say, 70% full. So I want to actually operate at the fairly full end because the drills may reach their end anyway. So this just, I think for my purposes, this should work a bit better. And then I need to set Energy. my timer block no. names, which will be Gravteroid TB. Minor full. And I'll do the same sort of naming convention for the other one. Once I choose a name for this base, I might name it something else. It's kind of like a way station sort of thing. I just haven't had a name that's really felt right yet. Um, and then it's or cargo containers. And then this will be drill PB text panel. It's going to catch an exception for the moment. When I replace the name of this text panel and recompile it'll say script loaded uh, and it's still caught an exception what have i done wrong now did i do the name wrong did i not save the cargo containers looks like i did not save the cargo container names there we go <laughs> now it's working so if you actually manage to um uh energy critical oh oh uh, as I was saying, if you actually put all of the groups in that you need and all the things that you need, the script works just fine. It's just I might have been missing a few things. So it's telling me it doesn't have the timer blocks yet, and that's because it doesn't. I have not named them. So for the timer blocks to work with this script, what I wanted to do when the drill, well, when the cargo is full, is stop the pistons from extended, which means switch them off, and also switch the drills off. So if I hop in here and go time block, so for full, setup actions. We have our pistons, grab drive brace, drill pistons, toggle off. That doesn't include my extended one, so toggle it off. Then we have drills. Grab drive brace, drills, toggle off. And lastly is the rotor. Drill head rotor toggle off. Now I think the drill head rotor might not have enough 
Oh no, it's got plenty of breaking talk. Cool. So that's the full timer and then the empty timer. We'll turn on the drills. Turn on the pistons. Turn on the extend piston. And turn on the rotor. And that's it. The scripts will tr the script will alternately trigger the empty or the full state. It'll only trigger it once and then it'll just wait until it reaches the other state. So I'm going to have to initiate this whole system each time I drill to a new location, but that's fine. That's actually what I would prefer. So let's turn all the drills on and let's grab all the pistons. Turn them back on. That's going to start, that's going to continue drilling until it gets all the way, have my lights on, all the way into here. And then I have to think about how I'm going to expand the drill to reach further in, because I kind of want to drop the drill head down here while I retract all the pistons to increase the amount that it snakes around so that I can push it. Ideally an extra, can I see the iron from here? So from this distance, it needs to go an extra 20 meters, 25 meters minimum just to hit the iron and get a little bit of it. But if I could push it an extra 50 meters, 60 meters, that would be much, much better. But I really wanted to set up this system for the drills with the script to turn them off. So I don't end up wasting some iron if I'm not paying attention. So while that drill is getting all the way in as far as it can go, which shouldn't take too much longer. I know I've got the drills, the pistons moving incredibly slowly. They are literally moving at, I think, one millimeter per second per piston. So for 10 meters, you can imagine how long that's going to take. And with simple mathematics, you could probably figure it out too. So <laughs> while that's happening, let's have a think about the drop pod. Um, and how I might have to launch it. So I'm imagining some sort of printer system down here. Say, coming off one of these junctions. And then a rotor mounted off, like a rotor mounted thing. Hmm. How will I do this? So I need a printer system. I need the rotor hinge mounted launch system. And I need a whole bunch of cameras to be able to supervise it from the planet. What else do I need? Um, that's kind of about it. So I'm going to lay out a mock-up up here. The reason I want to do that is I just want to have an idea of the scale I'm going to be working with before I start designing the launcher mechanism and printer mechanism because I need to know the scale to design the printer. The first question I'm faced with is what size of cargo container. And it has to be small grid. And it has to be small grid because as you can see, all three versions of small grid cargo containers do not require grids. Whereas both versions of the large grid one do. But whether I go with a small grid large cargo container or a medium one is what I am debating right now. So if we have a look here, the medium cargo container can carry 3,375 litres of stuff. The small grid large cargo container is exactly the same size as the large grid small cargo container and holds its almost five times as much. Yeah. So it's a lot more in a somewhat convenient package. And I was inclined to go for this as my possible design. But, for printing it might be easier to have something that's a couple of medium cargo containers together. Do I even need a large cargo container? What I've done here is I've transferred roughly the amount of iron it would, I would be able to fit into a medium cargo container if I'm using the refined ingots. And a medium cargo container on small grid is 3375. Which is going to be 26,000 kilograms of iron. I don't think I need to go for even more than one medium cargo container. Because I don't want to put all my eggs in one basket. I'd rather do multiple drops of smaller amounts. Especially since I know sometimes they get shot down. So that just made the decision for me. Medium cargo container it is because I can fit ample into this for my purposes. So I need to have a medium cargo container. 
I need to have a merge block and a connector. So I need to have a connector to allow me to hook up to the base systems to fill this, especially to fill it remotely. The connector is also going to have some cargo capacity, so that's going to contribute to the amount of iron I can drop. It's probably going to end up being somewhere around 30,000 kilograms. Which is pretty cool, because that's, that's kind of... Three of these drops will be more than I've ever had in the base at one time previously. So, it's a lot. So the reason the merge block has to be part of this and I can't use, say, rotor detachment or piston detachment or any of those sorts of things is because you can't project subgrids and this needs to be projectable from a projector. This has to be a blueprint I can make that I can use so that I can keep doing this stuff remotely as that's kind of the whole idea with this base is that I can create these things while I'm down on the planet and send myself some more iron if there's more up here to be sent. Eventually what I'll do is I'll actually set it up so that I have cameras set up around this mining rig and I can remotely adjust it and mine more of the stone and even send the stuff from it down. Which would be still kind of cool. So I now need to have battery. And I am tempted to go big. I wonder how long I could get out of just a few smaller batteries. This thing doesn't need to have much power. It just needs to have enough for the parachutes to deploy and a beacon to be on it. You know what? I'm going to put the large one on here. I don't need to. It's a bit of a waste of resources. Except for the test drops. The test drops I want to make sure I have plenty of power for. Because I'm going to need to use them to place stuff. And if I've used it on the test drop, I kind of need to use it for all of the future drops. Because the weight on the test drop is going to influence how far these things actually move and that means I'm going to have to have basically a remote viewable thing. So I'm going to need to have my gyroscope on there to settle the camera to the direction I want. I'm going to need to have a camera. I'm going to need to have an antenna. Hmm. Hmm. Lots of things to consider with this. Parachute hatch. I'm going to go with four of them. So you might be thinking but Splitzy, you said you didn't want to do an expensive drop pod. You didn't want to do something with thrusters on it because you didn't want to have to put all those extra bits into it so that you could fly it and drop it and not have to use any sort of flinging mechanism. Yes. This is still cheaper than one of those by a considerable margin. Because <laughs> I'd have to put all this and the thrusters onto a system. So even though this is more expensive than I'd originally envisage, envisaged, it's still cheaper than something would that's able to self-propel. And that should be everything that I want on it. If that's my pod, I now need to really think hard about my launcher. My plan had been to put something underneath here. But I just kind of realised, and I wish I'd thought about this before, but looking at the direction that I'd need to launch in, any launcher is going to be at great risk of hitting the solar panel with the thing that it's launching. And because it will have released by that point, it will actually collide and damage. It won't be just subgrid collisions that don't do any damage. It will potentially take out the solar panel, which would be obviously very bad. So, had to do a little bit of a rethink. My rethink is that I could build the launcher on top here. So if I'm building it up here, I think the best spot is going to be somewhere off the back of this, or the top of this cargo container, probably somewhere up here on the asteroid. As that's going to give me a fairly clear line away from anything that's fragile and delicate. It also means I get, I can build something relatively large. I shouldn't be in anywhere that the drills want to reach, so that should be fine as well. So I think this could work. What I need to do is bring the cargo conveyor system over here. Then think about how I'm going to set up my printer. I'm inclined to build the whole thing off an advanced rotor. So have the whole thing mounted on the same advanced rotor, the printer and the catapult. So that it can all be lined up. And then the catapult just comes down, the printer prints the thing launch. Comes down, 
printer prints the thing, launch. Rather than having to have any rotation happen with each launching sequence. Uh, much as I would love to make it rotate with each launching sequence, I think the potential failure points in the system like that are just too great to make it worth the risk, basically. I'm going to need to make sure I have a few attachment points here, so I'm going to use more junctions than I would normally. How, how many blocks long is this thing? Only just longer than one large grid block. I'd like the welders to be large grid, because large grid welders have a bigger range. Ooh, my hydrogen's a bit low. And that's going to be important for making sure that I don't run into problems with stuff not getting welded before the launch actually happens. I'm kind of regretting putting conveyors in there, because I probably should have put welders in along the bottom row and then looped back to conveyors. Just accept it's going to be this long. And go one and two. And then I'll bring some extra conveyors around to the side to add more welders from each side around where the attachment point will end up being. Just want to give myself the maximum field of welding that I can have and have as many welders working Energy on it as possible as low. well. Because the quicker I can print it, the... well, the quicker I can launch it, but it's more about... I feel that when I can weld something quickly, I'm less likely to mess it up. As in, send it with only part of it being welded. So now that I'm looking at this, I think I've done this wrong. I may have to waste some resource, and I may be better off having multiple on the side and none underneath. Yeah, this makes more sense, because then the lever arm will come down and sit between, and the lever arm will sit on the bottom, which means that the welded up part can be on top. Otherwise, the ones underneath we're just going to be trying to weld through multiple bits and pieces, and probably we're going to have most of their range wasted anyway. Now, it is thinner than one block, isn't it? It's five blocks across. Yeah. So I should be able to fit down between these welders, because it's exactly the same width as a single block. I think a collision of those welder tips might allow it. That could be a problem if it can't. I might just avoid welding up that one side just in case. I wanted to make it skinnier. Get rid of the parachute hatches. Instead of having them there, I could actually just make this thing drop from its back end. Would lose some of the parachutes by number. Because I can have one here, one here, and one here, but I can't have one on top because it'll connect to the other merge block and prevent disconnection. The parachutes have to be piped again so that they can be filled remotely. Is three going to be an adequate number of parachutes though? Camera can be mounted off to one side. That was all I got rid of. Since I'm wanting to use these and remote into them, I'll need a remote control as well. So that'd be my landing gear to lock to the ground, and then it's all fitted into a three by three by uh, a three by four by one, two, three, six, eight. Yeah, that's that's probably a better footprint. I was worried about the parachutes though. I can actually change this up. Move the merge down to the front, placing an extra parachute in here. And if I wanted to rotate the medium cargo container in the middle and put another one vertically. But I'd say four is going to be plenty. This is kind of why I wanted to lay this thing out so that I could keep looking at it and every time I go through my design of the launcher and everything I can realize issues that I wouldn't have seen had I not had some sort of mock-up to work from. Just helps with the visualization of where this is going because this is going to be quite a big build and I just want to make sure that it will have the highest chance of working right from the outset. Plus this catapult, it's going to get some greeble at the end. I'm not just going to leave it all as tubes because I don't really want it to all just be tubes. I want it to look supported. All right, well, I've got this welder thing there. That means I just need to have the launching mechanism and the projector merge block connector mechanism. I want to use a large grid hinge because they're going to be it's going to be a lot stronger than a small grid. And then what I'm going to do is place four 
conveyor tubes, followed by an advanced rotor with the head cut off and a small one added. And that gets rotor locked and set to zero and zero because I do not want it to move. Cool. Now let's spin this hinge down so I can make sure that everything does get positioned properly inside the welding field. Alright, I left myself plenty of room, that's what I was hoping for. So what I need to do is line up the connector and the merge block and then figure out where I can put a projector and then it's basically done and then it's time for building some faux launches that get loaded up with gravel! I kind of want to line this up right in the middle, which means actually not needing that conveyor frame. I'm just going with curved tube. And I'm going to put a frame in. And the connector. So the connector, I was lining it up there. I'll then need to have one, two, three, four blocks from it before we get to the merge block. Just for the first one, I'm going to build one manually on here. That should give me the least chance of messing this up. <laughs> I hope. So, connector. Yep, that's inside the welder field, or it should be. Then, medium cargo container. So, I'm going to have my parachutes coming off. Thinking of this as the top side. Oh no, I won't do that. I was going to place my parachutes on the side and see if it could hinge up and down, but... You know, I will. I will. I have parachutes. There, there. Will this flick up and down quickly? So let's try turning it off. Let's set our velocity to something fast. And watch the fireworks. Up the limit. Let's bring it down to zero. Three, two, one, launch! Cool. And where's my reverse? Reverse. Yeah, there's no clanging on those welders at all. Perfect. And almost out of H2. Ooh, eight. <laughs> really got to stop taking my eye off my levels. Now, with the gravi low gravity here, the hinge should be enough to launch this quite a long distance because it will both be able to launch it up and get it to even lower gravity, but also because of the way Space Engineer's gravity works and the speed limit, it's going to take a long time before the gravity is eating away at the horizontal velocity that the kind of catapult applies to it. <gasps> no! I forgot something important. Uh, it's going to be the easiest way to do this. Oh, that should be locked. So if I get rid of this conveyor frame, I can put a sorter in there, which I should have put in there, because I need to put a sorter in there to push uh, iron and canvases into the thing. So conveyor sorter. That was lucky. <laughs> I didn't even mean to put that frame in there to create that opportunity. That would have been annoying if I hadn't, though. So yeah, the conveyor frame should... The sorter will be able to be set up to pull iron and canvas and nothing else and fill the cargo container the it'll fill both connectors uh, but it'll also allow the parachutes to end up with canvases in them Let's weld this thing up get some lights on this rig and then i guess weld up the drop pod and see how it goes i guess i should see how much these welders can actually weld because they might be able to reach across to the other ones but i don't think they can and at some point I'm going to need to remember to build <laughs> a sensor in here as a safety device. Just in case I'm ever flying around this thing. Oh. I also just realized something. One thing I am going to need to do is set up an inventory manager script with the basic components that are required for one of these drop pods so that I always have enough parts and that if I start using them up the assembler will automatically kick in and start making more. So I need a little timer block on here for setting these 
connect like setting this connector to constantly try and relock so as soon as one's welded it'll relock onto it so Energy low. timer no tb setup actions catapult what it's going to do is lock and then it's going to trigger itself to start I don't want this happening too frequently because then it's going to potentially mess up my launch sequence. But I need it to happen automatically so that the system can reset relatively quickly. So I think having it on a 10 second timer is actually pretty good. It should start and then in 10 seconds those connectors will lock. So that's just going to keep running and it'll automatically lock it every time. Because this is merge blocked, you get rid of these. And... Oh! Bad place for my hydrogen to be very low. That wasn't what I was actually going to say. Energy I was actually going to say. <laughs> Ugh. It was something about turning off the merge blocks so that I can get a blueprint of my drop pod. I'm going to turn off this one. But it's still locked to those connectors, so it's fine. I can now get in and do all the things to this grid that I want to do, like naming it. Because I'm going to need to have a name for this one so that I can then project it. So, initially this sorter is going to be set up to whitelist. And what it's going to have is not iron, but gravel. Add. And he's going to... Ah! Stop doing that. He's also going to have canvas. And then it is going to drain all. That will hopefully fill this connector and the cargo container with gravel. May not do it super quickly because it is only one sorter. Yeah, so it's already full of gravel. With this being full of gravel, it should be a reasonable weight approximation while not being a high cost to having iron in it instead. I am trying much harder to <laughs> make sure that I name my blocks as I go. Uh, blueprints. Help if I actually made the blueprint. Remember the shortcut that people kept reminding me of. Control Shift B. That's created one for the ODP. Then we can go back to our projector. Blueprints. DP. Now I want this projector to keep projection. And then I just need to adjust it so that it's sitting in exactly the right spot. Perfect. It's a little bit off because this thing moved as the merge blocks pushed apart. If I turn that merge block back on, it'll lock back and be basically perfect. You need to stop being noisy. I don't like that beeping. <laughs> it's not ready for full automation yet, but this should be pretty much good for a test launch. I have the blue the blueprint it's set up to load uh, gravel into it i'm ready to print another one as soon as this one's fired now i just got to line this sucker up this will probably take a little bit of fiddling to try and get it to the right angle but it still looks like it needs to go a bit further i think for what remains i need two more timer blocks to set up the to complete the launcher because I need to be able to reliably adjust when the release happens. If I need to adjust, although I probably should just be adjusting the speed of the rotor, shouldn't I? No, it's probably better having two. I know why. <laughs> so what will happen with two is the first timer will trigger the rotor to... The rotor. The hinge to start moving upward. And also start the countdown on the second timer. The second timer will switch off the connector and merge block leaving the arm probably partially to vertical. So instead of potentially flinging this off, having it slide, it'll already be moving somewhat this direction. So at the moment of release, it'll just get continue to get pushed forward, especially with the low gravity that should potentially reduce the amount of vertical movement I get and make it more horizontal, which may make it more controllable, I'm not sure. This is a very... Well, it's kind of the best system I can think of for lining this up. I think that's going to be pretty good. Let's set up that timer block. Those timer blocks. 
Give it a one and a half second delay for the second timer block. So first timer block. Set up actions. Hinge. Reverse. And TB catapult. Release. Start. Then this one. Set up actions. That's an unfortunate typo. I'll have to fix that. Toggle off. Connector. Toggle off. Could even add a third timer block in here for a reset. Why not? I'm already here. I'm making a ton of timer blocks. Can't see any great harm in it. So timer block two. We'll start timer block three. Timer block three can have a nice long delay on it. And it will turn the catapultal. Catapultal. Merge block back on. The connector back on. And I'm going through all of this stuff because if I've messed it up, this is a really handy opportunity for you guys to tell me where I did. <laughs> so if I'm struggling with it, the more I include of this, the easier it is for my very effective troubleshooting comment section to tell me what I messed up. That should, in theory, be everything I need. Now I go sit in the remora. I press shift K. No, I don't. Well, this is going to be interesting. <laughs> Hope Steve gets a good view of this because I'm going to try and do it from this point of view. Um, and then I go TB. And I should, if I hit start on this with a, let's put a three second timer on it just so I can hit start close the menu, hide all my things, and hope this doesn't go horribly wrong. Okay. <laughs> I will automate more of this stuff as I go along and I uh, improve this, but I'm interested to see just how far afield this is going to go compared to the original one. Let's hit that start button and hope it works. Start. Uh oh. Where am I? Okay. Okay. That was incredibly stupid of me. I forgot to increase the antenna range. I can't get into its terminal. No! Splitzy, why? Well, that is annoying, but I still think there's a reasonable chance I'll see where that drops. Because the antenna. If I land close enough to the other antenna, I should be able to see it as a relay because of the relay oh I need to change that on the blueprint oh huh the reset timer also needs to reverse that hinge I've lost tracking on the drop while I was doing that I'm hopeful it will return once the pod gets close to the ground <gasps> no the pod's dead I didn't just stuff up the antenna range. <laughs> uh, Splitzy, this is why you don't do stuff like this when you're tired. So, as some of you might know from having watched some of my streams, I've been on night shifts this week, so I'm a little bit tired. And that drop pod then, that was an example of the kind of uh, lack of forward thinking that goes along with that. Basically, I've stuffed up a couple of very important things. One, the antenna range was not enough. But two, parachutes aren't set to auto-deploy. So, uh, that's, you know, bad. Okay, let's turn the welders off. And I'm going to re-blueprint that, replace the blueprint, and hopefully fix the whole thing up. Parachutes set to auto-deploy. Antenna range at full. All the other stuff is set and ready to go. Let's turn off the merge block again. Control shift B create a new blueprint although that's a new name so let's rename the grid again so now the correct settings will be on all those blocks when the next one is built and unfortunately that is aligned differently that's annoying in control and incorrect camera release tb1 take two in three two one and three two here we go! Oh, where am I? There we go, there I am. Let's 
Spin this around. Oh yeah. No! What? No, this doesn't make any sense. Why can't I stay in control of it? What? What have I messed up? Is the antenna on the remora off or something? Oh, it is. That's part of the problem. No? Oh, enable broad. What? Arr. Control. View. There we go. Now we're back. Where's the asteroid? There it is. There she goes. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> what? I don't know how long it would have taken me to realize that. So the other drop pod I probably could have saved had I been actually broadcasting. I wonder how far I'm going to go. I feel like I'm moving quite a long way. I'm going to go way... I'm going to way overshoot. So let's use my little spy satellite here. Have a look at what the terrain features are around the base. That does not look promising for any sort of ice lake nearby. Is that one there or is that just shadow? That just looks like shadow. That's an ice lake there. Where is that relative to the base? So that's through the western end of the valley, which is terrible terrain, and then a long, long way. Yeah. I think that's an ice lake out there too. Which might be easy to get to if I kind of travel from home base down along here, around, and then all the way out. I could, in theory, do that trip, I think. Actually, I might not overshoot. I'll be, interesting how, I'll be interested to see how accurate my alignment was to see whether I'm in a nice straight line from first drop landing to home base. I think I'm going to be a little bit off, but not too much. I think I'm going to need to watch the next launch from the base, like, not in <laughs> first person view of the drop pod because uh, I'm not sure at what point on the launch sequence I got released and whether adjusting that could adjust my distance because I'm going to need to play with that I'm also going to need to play with the speed of the hinge on launch because it's got a fair bit of, I think it go twice as fast as I currently have it because I think I had it at 15 RPM and it looks like might be landing almost halfway in between home and the first drop landing so not a bad effort for the first <coughs> first <coughs> drop <laughs> we'll just ignore the other one that's smashed somewhere on the ground around here Ugh. it's the goose all over again although nowhere near as bad thankfully okay parachutes are deployed I am still moving relatively quickly Turn the gyro off. The reason I want to turn it off is I want to see how this lands without me in control. Liftsy, 1.8 kilometers away. First drop landing, 1.34. Okay, I need to go a fair bit. What the? <gasps> Part of the drop pod survived. <laughs> how cool is that? Oh, and I'm locked. So, part of the first drop pod survived. I am not far from it at all. So the accuracy is pretty good. I don't think it's going to be good enough for a kind of capture mission. Uh, where I have like a grinder pit set up for these to just drop straight into get ground down before they even really land. I think I'll need to have some sort of crane or something very nearby wherever it lands. But a crane would be enough. This sort of range, it should be pretty good. Cool. We have... Definite forward progress on that front. But I want to now work on this thing. So, step one. Toggle you off. Step two, toggle the drills off. Probably should have done that as step one, because now I'm doubling back. And then, how am I going to go about locking this down in a way that will allow me to expand the drills the way I need? In kind of the idea I have in mind. I'm going to start by laying out the extra drills I want to add. And there are a couple I do want to add that I, th that people suggested that I think is quite a good idea. 
Uh, basically, it's going to be a drill pointing outward at the back here to hopefully help with the situation I have when I pull the drills back and I want to clear out extra terrain to be able to move them around so they can carve their own way rather than me having to carve it. And I feel like what I'll need to do for that is something like this. Hopefully a drill like that'll do, but if it doesn't, then the next thing I would do would be add another one sideways like this. But I think I think that one should be enough to at least help the situation dramatically. Uh oh, uh oh. Fuel low. Oh dear. Seven hydrogen no. Oh. Ah. To walk up the asteroid, not fall off into my mining hole. Right, now that I've added those, I've got the basic Energy equipment low. I need so that I can place down the landing gear to lock it in place to move the whole thing back and expand the piston array. Alright, locked down. That means I can detach this. Withdraw all the pistons. Expand. Oh wait, no. Um, that's not what I want to do. I want to attach. I want to use build vision, which can do something that vanilla can't do and detach the piston because then I can reattach another piston to that. So now what I've got to do is just as long as my new piston rig lines up where this one ended I will be just fine. This is going to be a bit fiddly because I have to go back to that same spot but it should all still work I think with what I've got in mind. All right lights. Uh, not do that. <laughs> Let's just make this thing a bit fatter and flatter. Even though I could make it into a nice little cross shape or, you know, a little box or something. I'm not actually that tight on space, given how large the drill head is. So I can do something like this. Now how Energy how much low. do I really want to add extra here? I think I'll go one more, then my curves up, another piston out there. And that is an extra 10... 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 80 meters in that this will go compared to what I had before. Hopefully that's going to be enough. Oh. Rats. I'm going to have to get a little creative with my drilling. I might have stuffed up a bit by pushing this drill head out so much further than it was before. Then attach. So this function of build vision that allows you to attach and detach things that you might not otherwise be able to normally uh, can actually be used to attach large grid wheels to small grid suspensions. So if you want to do something really silly you can do that. Awesome. This appears to be working just fine. Like before it's ridiculously slow and I'm gonna have to I would have to change up the way the drill works and add some more arms to it to speed it up but I'm kind of happy with it for the moment because it still works at least through the stone, so much quicker than I can process with my current setup. Well, I'm pretty happy with my progress today. Got the drill ready to reach all the way through to the iron, got the programmable block and the script set up so that I will not waste any iron by drilling through it when I have a full inventory. I have a launching mechanism that is terribly ugly and needs some style, but it is functional because I did get a lot closer to base than I had before. So next time, I'm going to do a few more launches and see if I can get even closer and get ready to actually send some of that iron down. This thing is going to get all the way through to the iron, potentially today before I sign out. And that means I can then work on more of this little base here. Underneath, instead of the drop pod launcher that I was going to make, I am going to make an escape pod launcher. So there's all that and plenty more to come. And I... We'll see you then.